Hello everyone and welcome to today's Kerbal Space Program video in which we are going to be recreating another moon mission that never was, uh, the Lunex project which you can see here we can do this nice spinning pan around shot. So this is similar to another video I made called the Soviet moon mission that never was or the failed Soviet moon mission, I'm pretty sure that was, that was the title of it. But regardless this one is slightly different because rather than being a Soviet uh, project this was actually something that NASA would have launched if they hadn't gone for the Apollo project. So this was kind of one of Apollo's big competitors really when it came to planning a moon mission. Uh, Nova was another one in case any of you are familiar with that one but this was the Lunex which was proposed by the, uh, the US Air Force as one of the possible ways of getting to the moon. Now some of you may notice the space plane sitting at the top of this stack. I'm not actually sure if it would have been encased in a fairing but some of the uh, concept drawings for it kind of show a space plane above the stack but not surrounded in aerodynamic fairings. That's why I've kind of left this almost awkwardly sitting at the top of this big booster. Speaking of the booster, some of you may be thinking that it looks slightly overpowered or at the very least overkill for a moon mission, MUN mission I should say for Kerbal Space Program. Um, the reason is I'm just trying to keep this as sort of accurate to the uh, to the actual booster as possible. We don't actually know what the rocket would have looked like because most of the uh, most of the concept drawings and planning was all kind of centered around that space plane at the top and the the little landing stages that are currently inside that fairing so I won't talk about those too much just yet but it would have been a three-stage rocket that would have taken this thing into low Earth orbit, so it's safe to assume it would have looked fairly similar to the Saturn, not that this thing looks similar to the Saturn V, but it would have probably looked similar to the Saturn V, but perhaps slightly bigger because it would have been a heavier payload getting into orbit. And one of the reasons the payload would have been heavier is because the mission was designed to be a direct ascent, or in the actual paper it was called a direct shot, but it means the same thing. For those that aren't aware, a direct ascent MUN mission, which is probably the way you did your first MUN mission, certainly the way I did my first moon mission, is to rather than leave an orbiter in orbit, you know, like a command module, and then sending down a separate lander that then takes off from the moon's surface, docks with the command pod, and then that's the thing that flies the crew back to uh, Kerbin. Uh, instead, a direct ascent is just kind of how it sounds, really, just flying straight up, landing the entire thing on the moon, then landing, then taking off and flying the whole thing back to uh, Kerbin. There's no docking in orbit or rendezvous or any kind of big reassembly. Uh, that would be, that was eventually used in the Apollo mission. So that's kind of the key difference between direct ascent and then what Apollo ultimately used. Um, direct ascent, it was favoured because A, it was a lot simpler and required sort of less time for R&D and stuff. So as such, a direct ascent mission could have in theory been sort of rolled out a lot faster than an Apollo style mission, or I guess at the time just an Apollo mission. Uh, although interestingly Apollo was initially planned, or at least some of the concepts for Apollo were direct ascent, but they ultimately went for the method that they went with. And like I say, a big reason for direct ascent not being favoured was because the uh, mass required to do a direct ascent moon mission uh, is substantially higher than what Apollo did. So that's why I kind of said earlier that although this thing might have probably resembled the Saturn V, it, it, it may have been slightly bigger um, just to, you know, compensate for the fact that the payload would have been slightly heavier. But I guess we'll never know, sadly. But we can do our best in Kerbal Space Program. So the next stage of the mission requires doing the burn at Earth <laughs> to get to the moon, uh, but putting ourselves on a crash course so that we don't leave any debris in space. So you can see the Rhino stage there. We actually have way more Delta V in this stage what we need for, unfortunately, but I'll still be detaching it when we detach it because I kind of wanted this to be somewhat true to the original plans. Unfortunately, I didn't have much time to film this mission though, so I didn't get a chance to test the rocket first. I kind of just looked at it and thought that looks like it'll probably be good enough. So I just, yes, this was all very much me winging it at the time. Just I had a piece of paper in front of me just showing the sort of the key points I needed to, uh, I needed to hit really. But there we are. We have ourselves a nice mun, uh, I guess mun encounter, mun collision. Probably should have detached the payload sooner, but I just completely forgot that that was a thing I needed to worry about. So we could deploy that fairing shell now and get a good look at this lander. Uh, but we'll do a quick radial outburn just to raise our periapsis um, to a reasonable height. So, you know, kind of went for a nice safe altitude. Obviously, we could have made that a lot lower if we wanted to, but, you know, there's, there was we've got enough fuel, basically. So when we leave the map view, there we go. You can see this thing for the first time. So you can see the three-seat uh, space plane there, as per the plans for the Lunex mission, would have been a three-seat space plane. It doesn't really look that similar to the space plane that would have actually flown, but uh, when I tried to make one that looked like it resembled the space plane from the actual plans, it just didn't fly at all in Kerbal Space Program. Unfortunately, the aerodynamics, it doesn't really work for things like lifting bodies, which is what the actual plane looks like it has. <laughs> but I feel like this thing 
it, it was quite a nice design. I was quite happy with the way the aesthetics of this one turned out in the end. So I thought, as per my Soviet moon mission and my Apollo recreation video, both of those ones actually uh, went and visited my moon base. So I thought, oh, why not do the same for this one? So we can start firing the landing stage. In a similar fashion to Apollo, this thing has a dedicated engine stage just for doing the landing and obviously the deceleration. And then we'll use a separate engine stage um, to actually get into orbit again. So we're leaving a sort of lander carcass <laughs> on the surface next to the moon base. So we're getting a nice little collection of landers here. So that's that's nice. In fact, you can see that rover quite close by as well. That was from a from an SSTO mission I did. I think it was called a six seat six wheel rover Mun SSTO. I don't know. There's a, probably a playlist on my... Well, there is a playlist on my channel for SSTOs. It'll be on there if you're interested in that. But there is our moon base there. And this will probably be the last time that I uh, visit the moon base in a video like this. Unless we're doing a video specifically about the moon base. Which is unlikely at this point because it's quite an old video. Because the frame rate was absolutely abysmal. Like, we're talking sub 10 FPS. And my computer is pretty good. And it was just not running well. There's just so <laughs> so many parts around here. So I have sped this footage up by about four times in Sony Vegas. So I, I hope that the frame rate is somewhat tolerable and it's not completely infuriating for you to watch. But yes, for me, it was a bit of a PowerPoint presentation, to say the least, in terms of the frame rate. Now here we're touching down. Uh, I, there was a deliberate move that we kind of touched down a little bit too hard and bounced. The actual mission, this is me make it up, the actual mission was supposed to sort of touch down at six meters per second. That was the... Uh, touchdown speed they aimed for so that's what I aimed for as well I don't know why that specific uh, detail popped into my head uh, when I was doing the landing I was like I seem to remember this when I read the document so I want to keep that it says the Apollo lander over there somewhere the Soviet one is probably around in fact where is it did I maybe I quick saved or quick loaded after I'd done the mission to a point where it didn't happen I don't know whatever uh, rather fitting, given that the actual Russian-Soviet mission, the Russian-Soviet, the Soviet mission never happened. But regardless, I'm getting a bit off topic here. Jeb can do a little quick fly around. I thought about getting all the Kerbals out onto the surface. There are three Kerbals here, as the as the plan was for the original mission. But the frame rate was so low, I was like, I just couldn't, I couldn't face it. There's only so much I can put myself through, guys. So there we go. Firing up the second engine stage. We have more than enough fuel to get into orbit. Ordinarily, what we would have done, we would have put ourselves on an escape trajectory from the Mun, and then get ourselves to have a have a periapsis, kind of within Kerbin's atmosphere, and do a nice aero capture and land ourselves on the runway. Unfortunately, it's very hard to do this in one go in Kerbal Space Program without lots and lots of planning, which, as you all know, is something I just I just ab abhor <laughs> uh, planning and you know high quality content. So we didn't do that. So instead, I have a little bit more fuel than what I'll need. We'll be doing this in a few stages in terms of getting back to the KSP runway. I've kept the lander accurate in the sense that the lander itself is completely unpowered so we will have to glide in hopefully getting ourselves into a nice runway trajectory okay um, but to make things a little bit easier we're going to do we're going to sort of deorbit ourselves from low Kerbin orbit rather than high Kerbin orbit which is what uh, the Lunex mission would have done so what we're going to do we're going to create a maneuver node at apoapsis and get our periapsis down to about sort of 40 kilometers is usually quite a safe uh, altitude you know give or take a few few but um yeah we're just gonna do a burn there you can see on the top left our periapsis height those green kerbal engineer readouts green or yellow i don't know people in the comments get annoyed when i say either so i'll just say both now uh so yeah forty three thousand and something so that's a fairly safe altitude for air braking but we're just gonna keep our temperature gauges activated just so we can keep an eye on things the one part that was going to overheat if any of them are going to overheat is usually the mark one cockpit it's not very good for uh, re-entering because I think it was mainly designed to sort of act as a terrestrial uh, jet cockpit rather than a spacecraft so it's not very good at heating but you can see in this case it's doing pretty well unfortunately we are still spending quite a long time in the atmosphere so you can see that temperature gauge is slowly filling itself up but we do we made out of the atmosphere um, before it ended up being you know a lethal amount of heat and you can see our apoapsis there is just well it, it looks like we've been a little bit overzealous in our aero braking there so we can do a quick burn from the engine to raise our uh, apoapsis to a higher altitude but no we're pretty much i'd say we're pretty much done there so we can make a maneuver node our apoapsis or in this case we can just burn uh prograde because it's not gonna be a very big burn because our periapsis is already at forty thousand meters so there's not gonna be much more speed required to get ourselves into a stable orbit and then we can think about getting ourselves to the kerbal space program kerbal space center <laughs> runway so 
you, we, it's quite, I'm quite lucky in the sense we have a few vessels on the parked near the runway at this point, so I can just easily see through the clouds, which are part of stock visual enhancements. Well, you use the mod environmental visual enhancements and then use the stock vision enhancements uh, config files, in case any of you are wondering those visual mods. And then we're going to deorbit our parapsis, well, lower our parapsis to just below uh, ground level. So in this case, I've gone with one and a half kilometers. Um, minus one and a half kilometers, I should say, for the parapsis height. And then we're just going to glide our way down and hopefully we'll get near the Kerbal Space Center. Now, luckily, I managed to get this first time. Um, this is, I've done this a few times, though. I've got, I kind of, I'm quite good at getting to the runway at this point. So don't be worried if it takes you a few attempts. I know it took me a very long time to get used to landing at the runway. And the other, now what we've got to do, because this is a glider, it's not, it's quite stubby. It doesn't, it, it stalls very, very easily, so you've got to be going very fast, otherwise it's going to start nosing down. So I kind of kept this thing fairly high until we were very close to the Kerbal Space Center uh, before immediately nosing down, just so we could keep a nice high uh, speed and stop our vertical speed from falling too fast. Uh, but a little bounce, not the smoothest runway landing, came off a little bit there, but we can, we can steer ourselves back on and hopefully no one will notice. But that's a pretty much this mission wrapped up. So I hope this was somewhat, um, I hope you enjoyed this. It's somewhat different to what I normally do, although I have done recreations of things before in the past. But like I say, I've never really done uh, this sort of thing before. Not, well, not, not very often. I don't know what I'm talking about here. Let's just, uh, let's just talk about the end screen. Top left is the failed Soviet moon mission that I mentioned a few times. Top right is just my, mo my most recent upload, and bottom right was specially chosen by YouTube's algorithm based on your viewing habits. So other than that, Patreon, Twitter, and Discord, all in the description, and thank you for watching.